Okay. It's about 5.45 in the morning. Heading to the airport. I have a flight to catch. It's a 6.30 flight to San Carlos. Uh, I'm gonna run up there and fix an aircraft that had a trim runaway issue yesterday. At least I'm flying private. I should be able to make it in time. Sometimes my garage door clicker doesn't work. You actually have to go and slam the garage to get it to open. You watch. It's quality. Okay, so I'm in San Carlos today to work on a rudder trim issue. Uh, this aircraft had a rudder trim runaway yesterday. Uh, what that means is that the trim was moving uncommanded. Rudder trim runaway, this is an example of non-deferred maintenance. At Surfair we operate with a minimum equipment list and what that means it's a list that's approved by the FAA that basically tells us certain equipment on the aircraft that we can operate with that, uh, that equipment disabled. It's a very common thing for operators to use. An example of something that could be deferred on the minimum equipment list would be, say, for example, a landing light. And uh, the FAA and Pilatus have established guidelines for how quickly we need to change that landing light. So they'll say maybe 10 days from the time that the landing light is inoperative. As long as all the other lights work on the plane, then we can fly with that one landing light out of service. And there's a lot of paperwork and, and other things that go along with it. Now certain things like, for example, a rudder trim runaway uh, fall under the non-deferred maintenance category. The FAA and Pilatus don't want us to operate with a rudder trim issue. We're not allowed to fly the plane at all with, with, this, with this particular issue. And so it falls under non-deferred maintenance. Uh, so that's why I had to come up here. That's why I'm going to be changing out the, uh, the trim adapter. Uh, the trim adapter is basically a small box uh, located underneath the floor back here and it's got several relays in it uh, for the different uh, trims. Basically either the pilots uh, through manual trim control or the autopilot through automatic trim control will send a signal to this box and inside the box are several relays which will close to actuate the, the various uh, trim servos. Typically when that box fails, you could have a trim runaway or a, a intermittent un uncontrollable trim situation. And so what I'm gonna be doing today is uh, removing the interior so I can access that box and changing it out. So the first thing I'll do is get out my laptop for the maintenance manual reference. So chapter 22 of the maintenance manual is where we're gonna find the trim adapter removal installation. It's uh, part of the autopilot system, so I'm gonna go ahead and read through that, familiarize myself with it, and then uh, I'll verify the part that I have is the correct part, and we'll get to work on swapping that out. Access underneath the floor we've exposed the trim adapter and now all we have to do is remove it that's it right there that's the trim adapter 
pretty snazzy. Just just four bolts mounting it, or four screws mounting it to the floor, and then an electrical connector that I'll have to remove. Okay, I've got the new trim adapter in place. I just have to mount it to the floor and then do my ops check. The ops check passed, so just got to finish closing up the interior and I'll knock out some paperwork. As easy as that, not a lot to it. Pretty, uh, actually pretty straightforward issue to fix, so. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it wasn't too boring. It's kind of a short video, but then again, this is a pretty short job. So, anyways, uh, I think I'm gonna end it there. Here's a time lapse of me doing my paperwork. plane I worked on. We're flying back empty. Let me know in the comments what you would do if you had a whole PC-12 to yourself. Kind of sick. I, I actually have no idea what I should be doing back here, but I'll figure it out. I'll find something to do. I wish you